Carrying a big phone is no longer by itself a badge of distinction. In a time when most smartphone screens hover somewhere around 5 inches, and even long-time holdouts have gotten into the supersized game, it's not enough just to be big. You've got to be smarter than the average smartphone. You've got to be special. And maybe, just maybe, you've got to have a stylus. Is the fourth generation of Samsung's famous phablet line worth your time and your money? I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Let's find out in our video review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. Okay, so this is the best Galaxy Note ever made. Of course it is. That's how annual upgrades work. If it wasn't, there would be a problem. But what does that mean? Well, for one thing, it means Samsung has finally addressed one of our longest standing gripes. Fit and finish. The polycarbonate backplate is still done up in a fake leather pattern to fit in with the whole notebook aesthetic. But last year's stitch work and plated plastic is out. In its place, a seamless joint meeting an aluminum magnesium bezel with painted detail and a gorgeous double chamfer. Have we seen this design before? Oh yeah. Are we worried about it scratching over time? Absolutely. We've already got a few dings in our review unit, in fact. But one, we'll never get tired of design that looks this good. And two, soft metal or not, it's gotta take damage better than the cheap plastic on the Note 3. And uh, you better believe you're gonna drop it. The Note 4 is thicker and heavier than most smartphones on the market, and reaching across its 5.7-inch display with one hand is a daring endeavor best suited to the brave or the foolish. That display is a Super AMOLED panel at the super high resolution that's become a necessity for top-tier smartphones. And yes, it's exactly as beautiful as the manufacturer says. It's dimmable to almost absurdly low levels, it's bright enough to read in broad daylight, and it's protected by a layer of material that Samsung tells us is more robust than Gorilla Glass 3, but that didn't stop us from scratching it when we dropped it accidentally. That glass extends almost to the metal border with a tiny expansion gap that's caused a big stir. You've probably read about it. While we're not really worried about it, it is a little concerning from the standpoint of dust incursion, so we'll keep an eye on it for after the buzz in a few months. Finally, Embedded in the glass is a Wacom digitizer capable of over 2,000 levels of pressure sensitivity, which gives life to the S Pen siloed in the phone's bottom edge. That special stylus is a big part of what makes a Note a Note, so let's talk about it real quick. Samsung keeps adding features to the S Pen suite, but its core function is the same. As fun as drawing on a screen can be, it's the navigation function that we like best. We've said it before, using the S Pen as a pointer for ordinary actions like scrolling and selecting feels much like using a mouse on a computer. And Samsung has added to that experience this year with a new highlight function that makes it easier to copy and paste text, or to look up words in the dictionary. That kind of stuff comes in handy more often than you'd think. And so do other abilities like annotating photos or using swipe on the keyboard. It's stuff like this, rather than the party trick nonsense, that makes us sad to leave the Galaxy Note behind after a review period every year. Even though we wouldn't use it all the time, we wish every smartphone could have an S Pen. It's much more than a simple stylus. Where the Note 4 stumbles is when it tries to do too much. And here, Samsung can't help but fall back on old habits. The company's third-party UI is just so heavy that it can't avoid keeping you waiting, especially in the rebranded magazine now called Briefing, and the multitasking ribbon, which has been redone to resemble the latest version of Android. Now, this is a very common issue. We've yet to meet a smartphone that doesn't lag at some point, but Samsung phones always seem to start bogging down early, which is concerning considering how much power phones like this are packing. And what you get in exchange for that performance hit are features that all too often seem incomplete. Scrolling with the S Pen only works in certain apps. Tossing content between apps is the same story. Functionality is duplicated all over the system, making the phone more confusing than it needs to be. While the company deserves some leeway for including features that few others are bringing to the table, it's getting a little old giving Samsung a pass on design in exchange for capability. The competition isn't standing still, after all. 
If you're the kind of power user the Note line was created for, maybe you'll adapt easily to the interface quirks. If so, you'll get a feature package that makes the Note feel like much more than an ordinary big screen smartphone. You can toss apps into resizable windows, shrink them down to floating orbs, or divide them across the screen so you can keep an eye on Facebook while you're watching YouTube. Throw photos from the gallery to an Evernote memo. Use S Finder to search the entire system for one search term. When the Note 4 remembers that it's a powerhouse, it can do some awesome stuff. And it looks better doing it than previous generations, too. New transparencies and minimal design give it a more modern feel if you use the stock launcher. And the briefing app is so hip looking that you may forgive its sluggishness. As we expected, the Note 4 also brings many of the improvements from the Galaxy S5. S Health is more capable than ever thanks to the Note 4's heart rate, blood oxygen, and UV sensors. And even if you can't make sense of that data, the coach is back to tell you to get off your duff every hour and move around a little bit, fatty. The fingerprint scanner is still an awkward swipe sensor, but it works much better now than when it debuted in the spring. And speaking of features, there's a whole menu section devoted to making the phone easier to use with one hand. On a device as wide as this, shrinking the screen to within a thumb's reach is more than a clever add-on, it's almost a necessity. And this is a feature even you lefties can appreciate, if you can master the tricky activation gesture. Same with the side key panel that slides out from the bezel, which would be much more useful if you could trigger the notification shade with it. Maybe in a future update. With a 16 megapixel sensor and the fancy optical image stabilization we love to see, the Note 4's camera isn't lacking for hardware. And as usual, Samsung has backed it up with plenty of controls on the software side, too. In terms of design, this hues closely to what's happening in the rest of the UI. It's pared down and modernized a little bit, but it's got a ways to go to catch up with some of the competition's usability. This being 2014, selfie-centric options abound, you narcissists. You can squeeze more people into the frame of the wide-angle 3.7 megapixel front facer with its panoramic mode, if you have any friends. Or you can take a detailed self-portrait with the main camera using audio and vibration cues. Once you get over yourself, you can start taking pictures of the world around you. And here, the Note 4's fancy hardware really pays off. Colors are luscious, contrast is rich, and automatic settings keep up really well with most environments. That optical stabilization makes taking photos and video much smoother through the viewfinder, and combined with faster autofocus and some software magic, it makes low-light photography a real pleasure. The Note 4 is still a big device, so it's a little awkward to shoot with. For the hundredth time, we'd really like to see a hardware camera button here, rather than the hacky solution of using the heart rate sensor as a shutter key. Also, the audio tends to peak more than on other phones when shooting video in loud environments. All told, that's a pretty short list of complaints for a smartphone camera. Habitual shutter bugs and budding cinematographers will probably be very well served by the Note 4's optics. Just like Keanu Reeves showed us in speed, sometimes being taller makes all the difference, and the few millimeters of added height on this year's Note make it slightly more comfortable as a phone. The sharp edges aren't the greatest on the ear, but sound quality is fairly clear and plenty loud on our end, and callers reported that we came through the same way, loud to the point of clipping, but not as clear as some other phones. Noise cancellation is thankfully solid through both handset and speakerphone modes, and speaking of speakers, Samsung's decision to move them back to the back is kind of annoying. But the component is loud enough that it's not a deal breaker, even if you're someone who uses a lot of loudspeaker. That's our favorite background track from one of our favorite games. And gaming is, of course, a delight on hardware this powerful. 
Our American review unit packs the potent combination of a Snapdragon 805 with an Adreno 420 and 3 gigs of RAM. Every game we threw at it, the Note 4 ran wonderfully. And with micro SD expansion up to 128 gigs, you can install plenty of titles to external memory, if you're willing to take a few extra steps. It's also really nice to know that your battery won't die after a half hour of gameplay, and the Note 4's stamina is fine. It's got the swappable battery common to Samsung phones, so you can carry a spare if you need it. And it also brings the super efficient ultra power saving mode for dire endurance emergencies. Over seven days of testing, we've usually been able to hit five hours of screen on time after a 16 hour day, which is good. The Note will probably get you through the day. Just don't go trying to last all weekend with it. With the Galaxy Note 4, Samsung has reasserted its dominance of the phablet market it helped create. It's not just another jumbo phone, it's a bundle of features so dense it should probably come with an old-style 500-page instruction manual. But you wouldn't read that. And despite its quirks, the Note 4 really is friendly enough that you wouldn't have to. This is a smartphone for power users, yes, for people who want one device instead of a phone and a tablet, and it's even a device for people who don't want a computer, to an extent, anyway. More than any of that, though, the Note 4 is a smartphone for people who love smartphones. And in that respect, it's the best one Samsung's ever made. Just like every year, there's so much more to the Galaxy Note that we didn't cover here. So go check out the rest in our full Note 4 review, available at Pocket Now on October 16th, and join us Friday, October 17th at 2 p.m. Eastern for a special Note 4 edition of the Pocket Now Weekly Podcast, where we'll take your questions live on the air. Till next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, Captain Two Phones on Twitter, reminding you that he didn't make a note pun even once in that whole video. You're welcome, Internet. As always, thank you for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.